Okay, the way we'll do like this, we have two sessions, and I will quickly review a bit what we have done under the framework of the GFCC Universal Research Leadership Forum. My idea is to bring everybody up to speed in terms of what we're doing in the GFCC and really to set the stage for the two sessions and the two discussions that will follow. So let me see if my, can it, yeah, it works from here, right? So, and especially for our colleagues in Greece, I wanted to invite everybody to check some of the materials, some of the resources that we have online at the GFCC website. So, back in 2010, the GFCC got it started. This is a picture taken during the first ever meeting of the GFCC in Washington, D.C. on December the 1st, 2010. In the beginning, the GFCC was a group of private sector councils, councils and competitiveness, economic development councils, and government agencies, economic development, innovation agencies. In 2016, we started to have universities and corporations as members. As of today, the GFCC, as I said in the beginning, it's a global multi-stakeholder organization. We met in London in 2016, and it was in that occasion that we launched the GFCC Universal Research Leadership Forum. We, our partner to deploy the Global Innovation Summit in 2016 was Imperial College London. We have a big, yeah? Today in London at the Shard, we have launched the Global Federation of Competitiveness Council's new University and Research Leadership Forum. We're bringing together over 40 university leaders from 21 countries around the world to really, in some sense, launch a new movement of university voices and leadership to advance productivity, prosperity, and a higher standard of living for citizens around the world. And we're hearing from university presidents how they're changing their institution, how they're staying up to speed. This is the GFCC in action. We bring together governments, we bring together businesses, and now universities for the first time. We can come together and agree on many common things that we know are good for all of our countries, good for our universities, good for our companies. It's a win-win-win. It brings together multiple perspectives, social context, political context, and multiple types of universities all in a single room trying to discuss the future of competitiveness, the future of economic development, and the role of universities within a region, within a country, and within the world in terms of driving growth, driving job creation, and driving prosperity. In addition to having the university leaders talk, I think it was really nice to have some corporate colleagues to give us the perspective of industry, and it was really inspiring to hear about some of the philanthropic work on the space program, and to think about the perspectives of people who've been in different sectors and now can help us, again, think at a higher level and, and get out of our everyday world and step back and look for solutions to really challenging problems. The University Forum is of great value to its members because one, they are sitting with peers from around the world that they don't all necessarily know, and they are really getting under the hood in an environment to talk about what their challenges are, what their opportunities are, and then coming together to co-create some new potential scalable initiatives that they can all benefit from. One of the key ideas for the forum is for members to create new tools, new platforms that could take advantage of the forum and scale up new solutions. 40 universities have signed up in five months to be a part of this. It's very special. It says there's not something like this anywhere else in the world. Since then, we've been working and advancing our conversation with universities, companies, government agencies, private sector entities around the globe. It would be great to have the University of Ioannina, it would be great to have the tech park, it would be great to have your companies as part of this global conversation. In 2017, building on what we, the, the meeting that we had in London, we launched a report that we called Convergence and Circulation. And the concept for that report is that universities, 
companies, governments need a certain convergence in terms of language, the way they work, the processes, the thinking, the mindset. And a key enabler for that is to have people circulating across sectors. We need people in industry who are acquainted with the language and the process of universities. We need people at the university who really know what happens in business. We need people in government who can also understand those worlds, so convergence and circulation. In 2017, we reconvened in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia for a meeting of the University and Research Leadership Forum, the Global Innovation Summit of the GFCC, but again, a meeting of our forum. And we launched another report that we called Speed and Leadership. And the concept for that was that the world is changing fast. Universities need to change fast, and that will require leadership. So we need vision, strategy, and implementation to be aligned to make progress quickly. We continued in 2018, and in 2018, we had two task forces running. I'm happy to have Mahmoud Abdul Ahab from Qatar University. Mahmoud was one of the leaders working with us in one of the, um, one of the reports that we created. We launched Leveraging Extreme Innovation that was really looking at transformational technology endeavors, moonshots, and how those impact societies and how universities can engage in that. But also, we launched Optimizing Innovation Alliances under the leadership of Qatar University and University of Zurich. What we did here, we reviewed 52 types of tools that universities have to engage in innovation how those tools are advancing, what are the trends, and what do I mean by a tool that can be a, uh, an internship scheme for professors to intern in industry. It can be a venture capital fund. It can be the tech transfer office that we just heard about. So 52 types of tools that are available and that universities, industry, government can use together. We continued that work we mapped the trends related to those tools, the key trends. In 2019, we met in Kazakhstan. We have Anwar and Kainar here. We're our hosts in Kazakhstan. We had our Global Innovation Summit in Astana. But we also had a meeting of our Universal Research Leadership Forum with colleagues like Leadership of Japan Science and Technology Agency also joining us there. And we started a conversation that progressed through the year. In 2019, we went to Brazil, and thanks to the National Confederation of the Industry of Brazil, we convened a group of research university leaders at the headquarters of Embraer, the aircraft manufacturer down in Brazil, to talk innovation, competitiveness, how universities can better work with the industry. And we started a conversation about the future of universities how the technology-enabled but impact-oriented university could better work. We did a variety of things, lots of things in partnership with the University of Southampton. Peter, it's here. We did, like say, we have materials that were published in their online. And we had three papers being developed in 2019, providing some elements for a future vision of universities. In partnership with RMIT University in Australia, Queen Mary University in London, the University of Auckland under the leadership of Professor Jean Madsen. All those things are available at the GFCC website. I really want to invite our colleagues in Greece to check uh, those materials out, to get in contact, to see what we could do together. Continuing that work, we all know that the world has changed a lot through the pandemic, and universities have done lots of things that need to, to, needed to react, and they did. So in 2020, 2021, we interviewed dozens of university leaders around the globe trying to capture the changes that were catalyzed by the pandemic, but also, and especially, the trends that were accelerated through that. We published a report this year that captures that, and very importantly, we again met our, we, we had a chance to meet with some of our university leaders industry leaders down in Brazil, again, thanks to the partnership with the Brazilian National Confederation of Industry and their mobilization for innovation. So in March 2022, we had people from 10 countries going to Brazil. We had a university industry 
workshop in partnership with CNI. We just published two weeks ago a report that captures some of the key insights of that conversation. What have we learned over the years? There are three things that I want to share with you. First, that universities are becoming more digital, porous, and impactful, but we are not there yet. It's a process. The vision that we have captured from all of you, it's not fully realized yet. So we still need to make progress. The second thing that's lots of changing things changing. The two sets are changing. The organizational solutions and how universities are set up are changing. The shapes and how the boundaries that divide universities from outside the world, they're changing. So it's a time for change, but also it's a time for universities, and not just universities, all organizations to be entrepreneurial. So entrepreneurialism, this constant state of being entrepreneurial, it's a second thing that we capture. The third thing is that we, we, in this process, we are more and more seeing boundaries being blurred. Universities combining themselves with the industry, with government, and sometimes you are not even to, able to identify, is this a private or sector uh, entity? Is this a university or business? It's in between. So this is a process. But above all, the whole notion and the, how we got it started with the foreign is that universities are growth engines in the innovation economy. This is why you are here today, and this is why you are here in this tech park.